Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So, Manchester United have agreed a deal to sign Alex Tells from Porto. And reportedly, Alex Tells has agreed a five-year contract with Manchester United. But no fee has yet come to an agreement. This is stemming from RMC. Now... It obviously said that Alex Tell's agent was in Manchester recently to thrash out a deal for his client to join Manchester United. And it says uh, a formal bid is expected in the coming days. Now, it did say that Alex Tell's is available for around £18.5 million. <clears throat> that's around half of his release clause because his release clause with Porto is around £37 million. Pounds. Now, Alex Tells has endured a few years with Porto. I think he's endured around four years with them. Um, he's got 10 months left on his current contract with Porto. So from a Porto perspective, they'll want to cash in for the player rather than letting go on a free next year. Now, Porto did pay around €6.5 million Euros for him from Galatasaray. Um, obviously, you know, he had a loan spell with Inter Milan. When he was younger, he played for Grimero, and he also played for Juventud. He is the age of 27, he is predominantly a left back and Manchester United are in search for the left back because we have got two predominant left backs in the team at the moment and that's obviously Luke Shaw. He's our first choice left back but my element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he's injury prone and obviously Brandon Williams, he's our backup left back. We're in now for Alex Tells because obviously we've missed out on Sergio Reguilon. <coughs> So, would you take Alex Tells at Manchester United? So, reflecting on what he said, he could possibly be our second signing in this summer transfer window. <clears throat> so, that is the breaking news on him. So, the contract's been agreed and the personal terms have been agreed. We we'll just need to come to an agreement on a fee. Now... I just want to delve into some news on Jaden Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. So, as you all know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has held talks with Jaden Sancho and he's assured that a deal to Manchester United is very, very close. But it recently said that Jaden Sancho has not asked to leave Borussia Dortmund in this summer transfer window. And it recently said that we have ended our interest in the player. Now, Fabrizio Romano did recently say that Jaden Sancho still wants to come to Manchester United. Also, David Einstein from The Athletic said that the personal terms have been agreed with Sancho. It also mentioned that the agent fees have been agreed and it said a contract worth 250 grand a week had been agreed. That would obviously make Jaden Sancho the third highest paid player at Manchester United, you know, behind David De Gea and Paul Pogba. But we have not yet come to an agreement on a fee. Borussia Dortmund's valuation is £108 million. We're not determined to meet their valuation and throughout the course of this Jaden Sancho transfer saga, it has been Borussia Dortmund's asking price that has been the stumbling block. Now, we are willing to be, we are willing to be patient with Jaden Sancho and it says we will make a final bid in the last week of the transfer window. It says we are willing to offer around £60 million pounds up front, rest of it in add-ons. Now, I've outlined the reasons why I want Sancho at Manchester United is because 
He's got a very, very good friendship with Rashford. He's predominantly a right winner and Manchester United are in search for the right winner and he is still very, very young. And he is our number one priority target. But Solskjaer is very infuriated over this Jadon Sancho transfer side because it has gone on for a while now and we have been in for him for the last three years. We did confirm we are not giving up on the signing of the player. It obviously said last month that Dortmund give us until the 10th of August to sign Sancho. Obviously, we missed out on that deadline, so Sancho decided to go out on pre-season. He also mentioned a few weeks ago that we'd abandoned our chase for the player until the summer of 2021. But Sancho said quite a few times if he was to leave Borussia Dortmund, he would like to come to Manchester United. Now, Lucien Favre, who's Borussia Dortmund's boss, he recently said that Sancho will stay at Dortmund this season. Sebastian Kell, he also said that Sancho will stay at Dortmund this season. Was it last month? Michael Zorg also said that Sancho will stay at Dortmund and the decision is final. But if we don't sign Sancho in this summer transfer window, we will never sign him. Or we may never sign him because next year we will face competition for the player if we don't sign him in the summer transfer window. I think next year maybe Real Madrid, Barcelona and maybe even Liverpool could go in for the player. Now we have been looking at a lot of alternatives to Jadon Sancho recently, don't forget. You know, because he's moved now to Manchester United does look unlikely. Uh, Sancho has endured three years with Borussia Dortmund. And I think it's been a revelation since he since his arrival in Germany. You know, Dortmund paid eight million pounds in from Man City back in twenty seventeen. He enjoyed a couple of years at Man City, but the main explanation why I left Manchester City is because he did not get assured any first team opportunities. And before he was at Man City, he was at Watford. And he was at Watford for several years. I think he was at Watford from the age of seven to the age of fourteen. You know, that's where he began his footballing career. Sancho still got a contract with Dortmund until 2022. And don't forget we made a promise to him that we are willing to offer him the number seven if he comes to the football club. We've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations, but we have got number seven vacant at the moment. Now, Dortmund have let quite a few of their Big names go in recent years. You know, they let the likes of Abamyang go, they let Ilkwan Gundogan go, they let Christian Pulisic go, they let Mikatarian go, they let the likes of Usain Dembele go, Robert Lewandowski, Matt Hummels, uh, they let Sinji Kagawa go at one point. So there you go. We was hoping to sign Sancho by the time we played Crystal Palace, but obviously now that's not going to happen. But Solskjaer has held several talks with the player. So that is the breaking news on that. But there has been so many players on our agenda. Now, there's around three weeks left, or is it just under three weeks left in this summer transfer window and Manchester United have still got quite a lot to do. Um, obviously, we've got to make more signings. We've obviously got to offload players. And, you know, we are struggling to offload our fringe players. Um, obviously, we're looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. We're looking to get rid of Andres Pereira. We're also looking to get rid of Smalling, Rojo and Jones. We're also looking to get rid of Diego Delo. Uh, Sergio Romero is open to leaving the football club. Sergio Romero won't want to stay at Manchester United, you know, as third choice goalkeeper because he is third choice goalkeeper now because Sergio uh, because Dean Henderson has recently returned. You know what I mean? So he's still Deadwood at the football club. Uh, now we're not looking to sign a centre-half in this summer transfer window because Solskjaer postpones 
to sign a centre-half until the summer of 2021, which is obviously next summer. So Manchester United have still got quite a few things to do. We have only made one signing so far in this summer transfer window, and that was Donny van der Beek. Obviously, we got him in the deal worth £40 million. We paid just over £34 million up front, and there was like £4.4 million in add-ons, and Donny van der Beek signed a five-year contract on Man United to keep him at the club until 2025, and there's also an option of a further year. We know he's wearing the number 34 shirt and he should be making his Premier League debut tomorrow against Crystal Palace. But I think he'll complement our midfield really, really well. But Solskjaer said he wants to make three more signings after Donny van der Beek. But Solskjaer recently revealed that he is frustrated with our board. The main explanation is over the lack of transfer business in this summer transfer window. And we've been critical of the board for several years anyway, reflecting on how poor our recruitment policy has been. Uh, we've made a lot of mistakes in the last seven years and that's one of the main explanations why we've been so inconsistent. I think the managers that we've had since Ferguson retired haven't been backed enough and that. You know, Woodward's been at the football club since 2012 and the Glazers have been at the football club since 2005 and Woodward has said quite a few times that he's determined to back Solskjaer in this summer transfer window and the Glazers have said that they're determined to back Solskjaer but I think Solskjaer deserves more backing because I feel as though that he is progressing as Manchester United manager and he's even publicly admitted that Manchester United have got to spend money in this summer transfer window. If we are to compete with the likes of City, Liverpool and now perhaps Chelsea. And like I've said on my recent video, Solskjaer is in, is in a similar situation to what Jose Mourinho was in because Jose Mourinho made it clear to our board in the summer of 2018 that he wanted to recommend a centre-half in Obviously, never got that centre-half in, and that was one of the main explanations why he got sacked. But Mourinho also had bad disputes with our board. He also had bad disputes with our top players. And the board just basically weren't back in the signings that he wanted to recommend in. Jose Mourinho endured two and a half years at Man United. Obviously, we did win the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season at the football club. But you know we're missing out on a lot of our missing out on a lot of our targets. You know we obviously missed out on Erling Haaland in January, and I said it was a shame that we missed out on him because he would have been an Oligan Solskjaer type signing. You know we also missed out on Jude Bellingham. We've missed out on Sergio Reguilon. We've missed out on Gareth Bale. We've missed out on Jack Grealish because he recently signed a five year contract with Aston Villa. So we are missing out on a lot of players. And another one of my element of concerns that these teams around us that are doing very, very good recruitment, by far, Chelsea have done the best recruitment so far. Um, I mean, they've brought quite a few players in, you know, they brought Ziyech in in February. They also brought uh, Termo Werner in. They brought Ben Chirwell in. They also brought Kai Havertz in, they brought Melang Sarr in, Thiago Silva, Mende, they've just brought him in, you know, Chelsea are looking to get Declan Rice, but Chelsea's priority is to get a goalkeeper to replace Kepa Ariza Belega. You know, Liverpool, they've made two signings so far, you know, they've got Thiago in and Tisikmas, now they try to get Jota. You've obviously got Man City, they've brought Nathan Ake in and Ferran Torres, um, Arsenal, they've brought Gabriel Magalhaes in and Willian. Tottenham, they've also made some good signings as well. Uh, they brought Joe Hart in, Holberg, Doherty, Kyle Walker Peters. They brought Sergio Reguil in, and they've also brought Bale back in. Uh, Leeds, you know, they've also made some good signings. So, like I said, you know, this is another one of my element of concerns. But this summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. So far at the football club, he has spent over £200 million. He has obviously brought six senior players in. 
Uh, last summer, he brought Daniel James and Juan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. And in January, he brought Bruno Fernandes and he obviously brought Odina Gallo in. Obviously, we brought Odina Gallo in on loan. He was our top goal scorer in the FA Cup last season. Just after lockdown, we extended Odina Gallo's loan until January 2021. Solskjaer's also brought a few academy players into the football club, so it's good that more young players are coming in. There's a lot of good young players that are coming through at Manchester United because since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer took over the reins at Manchester United in December 2018, he's had a habit of, you know... Develop. He's had a habit of bringing young players in with homegrown talent. And he says that quite a few young players have got a bright future at Manchester United. You know, he believes Tedem Meng has got a bright future at Man United. Ethan Galfbraith, uh, James Garner, and also to Hannibal Medjbray, if I've pronounced his name correctly. But he recently set our challenge for our academy players to replicate the likes of Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams and others. You know what I mean? But, you know, this season is a big test for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because, obviously, you know, this season is his second full season at the football club. Um, obviously, we need to see improvements this season. I still think like Solid Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got to improve his decision making. There's still certain players that have got to improve. I think there's still aspects of our game that have got to improve. Um, obviously, Solskjaer has got to exceed his expectations this season if he is to remain Manchester United manager. Um, obviously, you know, last season was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first full season at the club. Um, to be honest with you, he did exceed most of his expectations. The only expectation he didn't exceed was uh, winning silverware. But, you know, last season we got qualification for the Champions League and I did say how important Champions League was for our players, attracting players and for the financial structure. We also finished third. And we also progressed to three semi-finals. You know, we got to the FA Cup semi-final, we got to the Europa League semi-final, and we got to the EFL Cup semi-final. But if we, you know, can Man United mount a title challenge up this season? Can we do that? I think we need to make a couple of more signings if we are to mount a title challenge this season. Um, I, I'm hopeful that at some point that we can win the title under Solskjaer, but you know we're at least a couple of years off winning the title. Now, you know we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. We haven't mounted any title challenge up in the last seven years. I'm hopeful that we can win some silverware this season under Solskjaer because we've not yet won out in terms of silverware under the Solskjaer era, and we obviously haven't won out. Uh, we haven't won a trophy for over three years and that's the first time this has happened in just over 30 years. You know what I mean? So, there you go. But don't get me wrong, I have seen improvements since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended into the club. Um, you know, Solskjaer's made some good signings. Uh, he's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into Manchester United. I think he's also promoted the youth very, very well. There's definitely players that have improved under him. I think the likes of Martial's improved under him. Uh, Martial has endured five years at Manchester United. I think he's had two good seasons. Um, he did well last season under Solskjaer and he did well in his debut season under Louis van Gaal era. We paid £36 million for Anthony Martial from Monaco back in 2015. I think he is now the age of 24. We know now he plays in that number nine. But it's very, very effective in that central position, even though it isn't his predominant position. I've also got to say that Marcus Rashford has improved under Solskjaer. He's just recently recovered from an ankle injury. Uh, don't forget he had a back injury for us last season. He was out for a few months. But Rashford has been part of the club for several years. 
think he's been with us now around 15 years. He has been a United player since the age of seven and he has been in our senior squad since 2016. So, and since then, you know, Rashford's been, he's become an integral part of our team. We now know he plays on that left-hand side. Uh, Mason Greenwood, you know, he did very, very well last season. Don't forget, we recently give Mason Greenwood the number 11. He's going to become the fourth Manchester United player to wear the number 11. We've had a few issues with Mason Greenwood recently. Um, obviously, there was talks about in inhaling laughing gas. He also got withdrawn from the England squad for bringing girls back to the team hotel. So too did Phil Foden. Mason Greenwood did make his England debut um, against Iceland and Solskjaer revealed that he's, hold, he's held sorry, negotiations with Mason Greenwood. Um, I think Brandon Williams, he's also he also did well last season. It was his first full season in the senior squad. Don't forget, we recently gave Brandon Williams a number 33 shirt. He's become the first Man United player to wear the number 33 since Paddy, Paddy McNair. Recently as well, Brandon Williams signed a four-year contract with the club. Um, I've also got to say, um, I've been impressed with Odina Gallo. Um, I've also been impressed with Fred. He's improved under Solskjaer. I know Fred has enjoyed a few years with Manchester United. Uh, we paid £52 million for him from Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, we got him in Jose Mourinho's final transfer window. Since Bruno Fernandes' arrival, you know, Fred has found game time difficult. Um, I've also got to say that Nemanja Matic has improved under Solskjaer. He will stay at the football club for at least another season. Uh, he recently signed a three-year deal with Man United. You know, Matic has enjoyed three years with the club. Obviously, you know, we got him in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. Nemanja Matic. Um, also, too, McTominway, I think he's improved under Solskjaer. Uh, McTominway has been part of the club for several years, and I think he's the foreseeable future for Man United. Not so long ago, McTominway signed a five year deal with the club. Don't forget, last season, though, he did have that ankle injury, did Scott McTominway. But I think we've changed his role now, and he's our first choice defensive midfielder. I've also got to say that Paul Pogba has improved under the Solskjaer era. Uh, towards the end of last season, Paul Pogba was very, very good. His combination with Bruno Fernandes was exceptional, but for the vast majority of last season, I didn't really have a perception on Paul Pogba because he was out with that ankle injury. Pogba sustained a few injuries as a Man United player, but obviously this season he's going to be Paul Pogba's fifth season at the club since he rejoined from Juventus back in 2016. We did pay £89 million for Paul Pogba, so as it stands at the moment, he is our most expensive signing. Uh, he just recently recovered from coronavirus as Paul Pogba, which is uh, good from Man United perspective. It's also good for Paul Pogba and his family. But he was recently in training. Now, Paul Pogba is available for the game tomorrow against Crystal Palace, which is good news. But we've just got to get Paul Pogba a new long-term contract at the club to end the uncertainty over his future. Now, as it stands at the moment, Pogba's just got under a year left on his Man United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. So it's very imperative that he does remain at the football club. But Paul Pobba's agent, Mini Raliola, a few weeks ago did say that Pobba will stay this summer and he will hold talks over a new contract. And Fabrizio Romano also came out and said that Pobba wants to stay and he said he's happy at Manchester United. Um, I think, you know, the signings that Solskjaer's brought in have also, you know, done well. You know what I mean? I think Anwan Bissak has done very, very well. Um, he's just got to improve his attacking intent because that's what he's lacking at the moment. You know, this season's going to be Anwan Bissak's second season at the club. Obviously, last season was his first season at the club. We got Anwan Bissak in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace last summer. And I think he can be our right back for the next nine to ten years, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. Um, Harry Maguire, um, I thought he had some good games last season. 
but he also had some bad games, so there's still aspects of his game that I've got to improve. Harry Maguire was recently given extra time off for his arrest in Greece and his court case in Greece. You know, Solskjaer's confirmed that Harry Maguire will remain Manchester United captain this season. He will. Uh, we've got Harry Maguire in a deal worth £80 million from Leicester last summer. So he is the second most expensive sign at the club and the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment is Harry Maguire. Um, you know, I also think that Luke Shaw has really, really improved under the Solskjaer area. The only thing that Luke Shaw's got to improve on is his fitness because he is injury-prone. He's just recently recovered from a ankle injury. You know, Luke Shaw's endured six years at Man United. We got him from Southampton back in 2014 for £30 million. Pounds. Uh, Bay, he's also got to improve his fitness because he's very injury-prone. He will stay at Man United for at least another season. You know, Bay's endured four years at the club. We got him from Villarreal back in 2016 for £30 million. Pounds. And also to David De Gea, you know, he's got to get back to his best vein of form. Now, you saw my video that I did earlier on. I give you my reaction to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference ahead of the Crystal Palace game tomorrow at Old Trafford. And the first thing, of the, uh, the first thing that was mentioned in the press conference was Donny van der Beek. You know, how he was asked how likely he will be to play and how he's settled in in general so far. And uh, Donny van der Beek should be making his Premier League debut for the club tomorrow. And Solskjaer said he's got a good personality, he's a very good player, and he did very, very well in our 1-0 defeat to Aston Villa in pre-season. Uh, Solskjaer also confirmed that Luke Shaw and Paul Popper are available, even though Solskjaer did say uh, not, long, not so long ago that Paul Popper was a doubt for the game. Uh, Alex Tuanzebe is unavailable. He's out with injury. I think Phil Jones has just recently recovered from injury, but he's still not available to be selected. Um, he was talking about Mason Greenwood as well. Uh, Solskjaer has been infuriated with the FA and Gareth Southgate of the handling of Mason Greenwood, saying that Mason Greenwood should have been rested. Uh, he's also, he spoke about Harry Maguire, he said he's unsure how Harry Maguire's arrest in Greece and his conviction will affect him this season. But yeah, he did give us an update on our transfers, uh, the new season ahead and who will be fit, obviously. And he says, you know, he can't talk about players from other clubs and he can't speculate because he was obviously asked about Jadon Sancho because obviously we're attempting to get him from Borussia Dortmund. But Solskjaer said he wants Manchester United to make more signings. But it's very imperative that we do beat Crystal Palace tomorrow because we want to get off to a winning start. I expect Manchester United to win, but I am not going to take anything for granted. Uh, this is this is Crystal Palace's second game of the Premier League season because they won their first game against Southampton by one goal to nil. They're out of the Cowboy Cup because they recently lost to Bournemouth 11-10 on penalties. Uh, this fixture against Crystal Palace last season at Old Trafford was 2-1 to Crystal Palace and that was Crystal Palace's first win at Old Trafford in the Premier League since 1989. That's around 31 years ago now. But we'll beat them at Selhurst Park towards the end of last season by two goals to nil. So we've got a pretty good record against them. You know, Crystal Palace have got some injuries. You know, they've got Christian Benteke out. They've got Connor Wickham out. They've got James Tonkins out. They've got Gary Cahill out. They've got Nathan Ferguson out. And they've also got Patrick Van Ant all out. But Crystal Palace have still got some good players. You know, they've got Wilford Zaha. He's a former Man United player. They've got Jordan Ayew. And I still think like they've got uh, Andy Townsend. And Roy Hodgson is their current manager. So we need to have a good start to this season. Because if we do, then more Manchester United fans will be convinced that Solskjaer is the right manager. And he is the foreseeable future. And if we do well this season, there's a possibility chance that we could extend Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's contract. As it stands at the moment, he's just got under two years left on his current contract. 
but we are unbeaten in our last 14 league games, which is very, very good news. Um, but I'll have more of a perception on Solskjaer this season. I really, really will, you know. But I always said Solskjaer deserved another season because it is a transition period for Man United and it has been a transition period for a while. When Solskjaer first came in, I said he was inheriting a squad that was worth £700 odd million pounds before he obviously made signings at the football club because he's inheriting a lot of plays here from the Mourinho era, still a few plays here from the Van Gaal era and still Matt from the Moyes era and still a few plays here from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Solskjaer has been in the football club now over a year and a half. He is our fourth permanent manager since the Ferguson era. You know, we have sat three managers since the Ferguson era, and that was David Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. You know, we have won only three trophies since Ferguson left, and that was the FA Cup under van Gaal and the Europa League and the League Cup under Mourinho. But under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, we won a total of 38 major honours. And I just think it's going to be hard for any manager at Manchester United to replicate Ferguson's legacy or to last as long as Alex Ferguson did. So there you go. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.